Hey folks, welcome. Here we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man who finds his girlfriend in another man's house. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. My girlfriend, 24, cheated on me and I caught her at the other man's house. Yesterday she said she would go to the gym instead of having coffee with her work friends. I didn't have a reason not to trust her. We had access to each other's phones and laptops. Our relationship was great. Sex three to four times a week and a date night every weekend, plus frequent vacations. We both are high earners, but I spend more on us because she has a large, think high five figure, debt. I thought we were solid and heading for marriage. Yesterday evening, my front desk co-worker got sick. He didn't have a car, so I offered to drive. He lives on the opposite side to where I live, so it was a major detour, but I offered anyway and drove him down. Two or three houses from his place, I noticed my girlfriend's car sitting in the driveway of a house. I drove to my colleague's house and called my girlfriend. She went on about some workout she was doing and how it was activating some muscle. After I hung up, I drove back home and drove down back to my colleague's place with the spare key of my girlfriend's car. It's my old car that I had given to her because she can't get a car payment plan due to her credit being shit. I got into girlfriend's car and drove away. I was in shock disbelief and denial. I drove home, parked her car in front of our house, and waited for her to call me. Three hours later, girlfriend called me, sobbing that her car had been stolen from the parking lot at the gym. I calmly told her that I just looked out the window and her car was sitting perfectly in my driveway. Then I asked her if she was working her muscle in the missionary position and hung up. About an hour later, she appeared at my doorstep. I refused to let her enter and texted her that she needs to go work that muscle out a bit more. She kept calling and sending me texts, but I never replied. Then she started crying against the door for forgiveness. She said she got carried away with his attention and this would never happen again and some shit. After a few hours of crying and begging, she eventually left probably back to his place again. I've never been cheated on before, so this is too much of a shock. She keeps texting me that I need to let her in and we should talk, but I do not want to see her. I feel violated. Like how many times had she come home straight from his place and then got into bed with me? I noticed she's been horny lately after her gym visits. I've packed most of her stuff into big bags, but I'm hesitant to follow through. She keeps saying I can't kick her out because this is her house too. My name is the only one on the lease. What do I do? Any advice? Edit. So I got a lot of good advice. I admit things were still fresh and I was not thinking straight when I wrote the first post. A lot of users pointed out how illegally evicting her could bite me in the ass. So I let her back in the house. We sat down, talked, and cried. She looked tired and unkempt. She apologized and said she loves me and asked, would I not really want to give her a chance for old times sake? I said no. She looked dejected after that. I told her she is no longer welcome to live with me, so the best option is to take her things and move out today. She asked me how long I was giving her time to find a place. I said it was no longer a concern of mine where she lived. But if she didn't leave today, then I'll start an eviction process and have her out by a week. She started crying and said I was being unfeeling. I asked her why she can't move in with the AP. Oh, well, a tale as old as time. Turns out he has a wife and three kids. After some more sniffling, she called a friend of hers. Both her and friend packed the car with big bags while throwing me the dirtiest looks. They left after about an hour. I feel like shit and been drinking a lot. So many years down the drain. Why did this happen to me? Update. I caught my ex at a guy's place about two weeks ago and then kicked her out. I've been feeling pretty miserable, but the pain is starting to fade. I'm starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I wasn't going to make an update, but today I got an interesting text from the ex asking why I haven't still paid towards her loan this month. Apparently, she thought I'd keep paying it even though we broke up and she betrayed me. When I told her it was no longer my duty, she sent me a long text calling me dishonorable for not keeping my word and pulling the rug from under her. She said I was trying to make her life unnecessarily difficult just to get back at her, but I need to snap out of it and do the right thing. She sounded pretty unhinged. Can't believe I was dating her two weeks ago. Anybody else experienced something similar? Now for some comments. 
I'm not saying you should be paying her loan, but if you've made a promise to do so and she's already mapped her finances out that way, then I can understand why she'd feel you're pulling the rug out from under her. Maybe you can pay towards it a bit longer, till she's figured out her finances, or at least her living in car situation. You agreed to help her with this financial burden, and backing out now isn't going to change what happened. It's better to show you're the bigger person by keeping your end of the bargain. Don't let your emotions drive your decisions. Looks to me like the loan repayment came with conditions. The problem is, was she aware of those conditions or were they never voiced to her? I do not blame you for breaking up with her and kicking her out. But here we are talking about putting a person in thousands of dollars debt that they're unable to pay. Changes in financial status like that can be life-ending. She messed up, no doubt. But reneging on your agreement to pay her loan makes you look small. If you want to move forward and heal, you need to separate your personal feelings from your responsibilities. It's about keeping your word, not about her. Just putting it out there. Story 2 This started several months back when she told me she no longer loves me and doesn't see how she could ever be happy with me after 8 plus years of marriage and 2 boys. I did everything I could to try and convince her we could make it work. Then I started to get suspicious of her, until I finally found out that she was sleeping with someone. I didn't directly confront her, hoping, I don't know, that maybe she had some sense of decency and would own up to it. After enough times hinting around that I thought she was cheating, she admitted it, but was in no way remorseful. The most she ever said was she was so sorry it hurt me, but she has no plans of stopping. Well, we're going through the divorce process now, just waiting for mediation and all the details to get sorted out. But she continues to go out with him. She doesn't flaunt it, but I'm not an idiot and can tell. Plus, I know their regular schedule of when they go out. He's in his own separate relationship, too. Lovely. Whenever they go out, it kills me, and I honestly dread it every week. And we have several months left in this state until the divorce is final. She refuses to move out because she's afraid of any legal ramifications of her leaving the house. I won't move out since I didn't wreck this marriage. Any help on how to cope with this until divorce is final? Update 1 My soon-to-be ex-wife had an affair before she ever told me she was unhappy in our marriage and wanted out. As we are going through the process, still living in the same house, kids involved, so NC is tough, Anytime I find out something that hurts me, it seems to always be my fault for asking. Hurt by her having an affair? My fault for being suspicious and dragging it out of her. Hurt by her going out with this guy? My fault for asking where she's going. Hurt by her telling me she hasn't been attracted to me in a long time. My fault for having a conversation when she had a bit to drink. Apparently, if I didn't know about how horrible a person she is, I'd be happier. Update 2. Officially separated, she's moved out. Financials are mostly sorted out, just waiting for the divorce to be final. Four months since D-Day, and the last month or so was actually okay. The whole process of figuring out the logistics and finances of our new reality gave me a sense of hope, and just looking forward to the next stage of my life. Now that stage is here, I realize it sucks. I still miss her. How messed up is that? I still care for her. She's wrecking her life and can't see it. I'm sad and lonely. I hate this whole split time with the kids. The whole planning things for them separately. I hate that she seems to be okay with this. Yeah, yeah, she might be a mess, but that's not how it seems. Still with her AP, who's still married and still a scumbag. I no longer see any light at the end of the tunnel. And it sucks. Update 3 First Christmas since my life was turned upside down. Took our family pictures, just me and the kids. And that hurt. She's on her second boyfriend. That's right, she broke up with the guy she left me for. And I've just been angry and upset all day at her selfishness and the shitty Christmas she left me with. Just all backwards and painful. All the thoughts of what could have been, all the sadness of memories or traditions that are just different now. She gets to go and do whatever she wants, and I'm the one hurting. What a joke. Final update. Been divorced for almost three years now. I can gratefully say that it's been over a year since I came out of the deep fog and depression 
over my ex's affair and her leaving. But honestly, I feel stuck right now. When I was dealing with all the grief, I felt in a way that life was simpler. I did whatever I felt like I needed to do to take care of myself. Whether biking, kayaking, binge watching movies, I made sure my kids were taken care of and did my best as I just lived day to day. It wasn't easy, but I did what I had to do to make it. Now that I'm not consumed by being in survival mode, life feels a little overwhelming. I'm not sure what I should be striving for. I love my job, have plenty of passions and hobbies, but I'm feeling like depression might be making a comeback. Not about my ex, but over feeling stuck and unsure of how to live this life, if that makes any sense. I've always been an introvert and socially awkward. It's a struggle making deep friendships in my mid-30s. Anxiety is high and I overthink every decision and feel lost. The things that brought me joy before still do. I'm genuinely enjoying this time being single and the flexibility I have to travel and try new things. And yet, in the end, it all feels a little empty. Do others feel like this too? You're not stuck, OP. You're now living a normal, boring, monotonous life. It is the best kind of life any person can hope for. You no longer have drama in your life. You have a good job, things you love to do, and you're healthy. All this time you've been forcing yourself to do fun things, forging friendships to get over that dark period of yourself. Now that period is behind you and you feel like there's nothing you have to strive for. So chill, lay back, relax and take things slow. No more forcing yourself. You're healed. You just haven't processed it yet. 